Green Bay. Ryan throws, end zone. Jones caught it all the way through. Touchdown, Atlanta. Oh, what a grab by Quintoris Lopez Jones. This is After Hours with Amy Lawrence. We are at, well, I was going to say we're at Radio Row, but we're not. I was at Radio Row on Tuesday afternoon. Now I'm at Sports Radio 610 in Houston. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence, CBS Sports Radio. The Falcons are here. The Patriots are here. Current players for other teams are here. Hall of Famers are also walking around Radio Row, and it's always so amazing to connect with them and to get their stories, especially guys who played in different eras, like Mike Haynes, the Hall of Fame cornerback for both the Raiders and the Patriots. He's a Super Bowl champ with the Raiders way back when in the 70s and 80s, and I was in awe. And we were talking, even before we started recording our conversation on Tuesday, we were talking about guarding today's receivers and how the game has become so offensive-minded. He said to me, everyone throws the ball. When you think it's a, a typical running situation, They still throw the ball. And he talked about Julio Jones, and you hear one of the two touchdowns from Julio in the NFC Championship game against the Packers. Everyone has become an offensive juggernaut, and and so it was kind of neat to hear him talk about that. But then I began our conversation by asking him about the rules changes because you hear that a lot from players, especially defensive guys who played uh, before they made all these changes to kind of protect receivers and quarterbacks and running backs. And so I asked him his reaction when he sees how the rules have changed to benefit offenses now. Well, you know, I think that it changed a long time ago in favor of offense. I mean, even when they uh, decided to move the hash marks closer to the middle of the field, there was a time when uh, running backs uh, to get 1,000 yards in a season just didn't happen that much. When they moved them to the middle of the field, now almost every running back gets (laughs) 1,000 yards. So it's it's made the game more exciting for fans. Uh, the, with the rule changes, receivers should have an advantage, and mm. you know, and if they don't have a, a clear advantage, then they'll probably change them some more. <laughs> you know, I think they. Well, I guess you, that's where I, that's right. They already did right. So they changed with that five yard bu- uh, bump rule. Uh, they actually allowed offensive linemen to use their hands a little mm. bit differently. Where before they kind of blocks with their with their hands close to their body. Now they can extend their hands. Uh, it's much easier for those guys to block uh, and to protect the quarterback. So the, most of the advantages are, are going to the offense, but that's okay. You know, if the, the defensive guys can play great and uh, make plays in that situation, then pay them. Pay them more money. You know? <laughs> so there's, a, there's quite a few of them are doing a great job at that. Do you think the game is safer? Than when I played? No way. Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the game today, and it's got to get even safer, I believe. I, you know, you, I looked at some of the playoff games, and I watched Aaron Rodgers take some hits in that Dallas Cowboy game, and I thought, wow, you know, they're not even calling that. That's a legal hit now? Wait a minute. Uh, I think at the beginning of the season that would have been a flag. <laughs> you know, So I think, uh, you know, maybe the toughest part is just being consistent in their calls. Mm. Uh, but I really do like the, the, uh, the change. I think it's better for the players. It's better – um, for the kids who watch the game and their parents who are thinking about letting their kids play, I, uh, I think you have to be serious about those kinds of things. And um, I just like it, and I hope it continues. In today's game, whether it's watching TV, whether it's playing, you don't go more than five or ten minutes without hearing about concussions. How were head injuries dealt with when you were a player in the 70s and 80s? Um, well, if you could play, you played. You know, um, If you couldn't play, you, you, you didn't play. So, um, you know, I had um, I used to say that I had three concussions in my, when I played, uh, but uh, and I know I had three because they affected my uh, cognition or connect uh, con- <laughs> um, affected my vision. Mm. Um, but when I found out that a headache was a symptom of a concussion, that was when I got really worried uh, because that means I had a lot of concussions in my career. Mm. Um, so. You know, I, I think what they're doing now, we, we're learning a lot more about concussions and, uh, and CTE, and we're learning um, about the, you know, even though you may not, um, may, may not seem to have any cog- cognitive issues, that you might be having them anyway. And so, you, you know, to have a test where there's like a baseline, and then later you can come back and see, okay, let's see if things have gotten, gotten worse. Um, and, you know, things like that I think are helping uh, the scientists, it's helping the researchers, it's helping the coaches and the trainers make good decisions to, to make the game safe, ensure that their you know people on the field are are, are safe. Mm. What do you remember about your Super Bowl win, your experience? Um, 
I remember that, uh, you know, we pl- played the Washington Redskins in that game, and the Redskins were defending champions, and I'd have to say they were the most prolific offense that I had seen uh, at the time. And I was really surprised that in our game against them, the you know, you, you know how you, the team comes out and they warm up and mm-hmm. then they go back in and they come back out a second time? Well, when they came out, they looked like they had so much energy. They, act, they looked like they were invincible. They acted like they were invincible. Uh, and I think it's because they had played the Raiders in the regular season and had beaten them. And so they felt pretty confident. But uh, in, that, in that game, the Super Bowl, uh, Marcus Allen did not play in that earlier season game. The Uh-oh. Season game. <laughs> and I was still hanging out in limbo land uh, trying to get a, a contract to play. And so the two of us did not play in that game. I think we had um, quite an impact on the result of that game. Uh, and, you know, we had some guys that d- really did great on the defense. And uh, the, the defensive coordinator did an exceptional job of getting the guys ready for that game, calling a great game, allowing us to, to play. And we shut those guys down. So it was a, it was a great game for me, <laughs> you know, a great game for the Raider defense <laughs> and, uh, and, and a lot of fun to play and a great memories from that game. Mm, so Super Bowl win. Hall of Fame induction, uh, and and now just getting to be part of that fraternity and share all these amazing stories. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I deal with this a lot on my radio show where I encounter fans who never saw, you mentioned Marcus Allen, never saw Marcus Allen, never saw Joe Montana, never saw some of the greats that played. Uh, it's it's awesome, I think, to talk to people that played almost when it was a completely different game. I mean, it's just changed so much. Well, the thing that's really changed the most, I'd say, Amy, is how it's televised you know you can go on the internet and read about all these guys if you you might have missed a game but Mm. you can go and find a video of that game you can even see the whole game start to end you know so it's just more football and so today the kids um, they can really fall in love with the team they can fall in love with players and you also have fantasy football so they're looking at different parts of the game that that they may not know anything about um the Steelers, but they know about Le'Veon Bell because, you know, he scored all <laughs> right. these points, you know. Right. So, yeah, so, it's, it's different. So you, Mike Haynes, who played in the 70s and 80s, do you wish that Mike Haynes played in today's game where it's all access? Not only do you have a platform, but it's social media. It's, it's really nonstop. There's a downside to that, though, because your privacy has been so reduced. Yeah, and so I think I would, I think I would like to have played today, uh, as, but I, I have no regrets of the era that I played in. Um, you know, I still think the, you know, the players were just as fantastic. The only mm-hmm. difference is the media and how the games are portrayed in the press and uh, with the fans and the relationship they have. It's a different game, but it's still, you know, today I, I wouldn't be at all upset, you know, to go either way. <laughs> um, you know, in my entire NFL career, I probably made $3 million in 40, 14 years, 14 seasons. And if I had the exact same career, I would probably make about $130 million <laughs> over that 14 years. So, you know, that's a huge difference. Sure. But, but that's because of the media. And that's because of uh, the different things that are, that are around today that didn't exist when I mm. played. What does it take to stay on top? Like the Patriots have, like the Raiders did in general. What does it take to stay relevant and to stay at the point at which you're contending year after year after year? Uh, I think knowing what you're doing and uh, and having a, a plan to get someplace that you want to, you know, if you want to have a contending team, you okay, what kind of players do I want to have? What what is it that I need to to get those players? What I need to do? What you know? And so um, the Patriots, I think they figured it out. Uh, the great teams have <laughs> <laughs> they figured it out. I mean, you know, it even started with uh, Bucko Kilroy, the general manager that they had. Um, and the different things that he taught or he wanted from his scouts. And so his scouts went out and looked for a special kind of player. They didn't have to be at the great schools that everybody would think they're great players. They find guys that are at small schools, even D2 and D3 schools. Um, but they, the thing that they all have in common is they all want to play smart and they all want to win and they all want to win for a long time. Mm. I don't think they're in it for the money. I think they're in it for the greatness of, you know, how great can I be? How, 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 you know, how long can we do this? How long can we win? And I think that's, uh, that's unique, with at least what the Patriots have. I think that's what the Raiders had when I played there. Um, and I think they're getting it back. They're figuring it out. 
Uh, I think that's what the Cowboys had, and I think they're figuring it out too. Mm-hmm. And so I think the Steelers, you know, there's a there's a few teams, and I really have to throw Atlanta in there now. I think they're figuring it out. Rich McKay's been around, and you know, he's been around for a long enough time. I think they're getting it. And so I, I don't know if they share that kind of information from team to team, um, but the great ones, um, you know, one like Green Bay, another one, um, they know what they're looking for, and they're willing to make sacrifices to get it or to keep it. So most importantly on your resume, in addition to all the other things that we've talked, the other things we've talked about, is that you're a cancer survivor, uh, and you survived prostate cancer. And That's now, the most important. Yes. I survived it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now working with the Urology yes. Care Foundation, the NFL, and Thank the you. website is knowyourstats.org. Um, it's it's everyone's got a story about how cancer has touched their life. You went through it personally. Why is this so important to you now to make sure that you tell your story and that you get the word out? Well, I actually found out that I had it, or my story starts uh, with me being in the right place, you know. And so I was at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and they were doing a screening of retired players, and they they asked me to, you know, get involved, and so I did. I took a simple blood test, mm-hmm. and that test led to a conversation with a doctor that uh, I felt pretty ignorant. You know, he said, well, "Do you know if?" prostate cancer runs in your family I said no I don't you know he says did you know that African-American men there's one in five chance that you're going to get it I go wow it sounds like a lot of men okay, and if it runs in your family it's a one in three chance and I go, wow I said well how many women get breast cancer one in eight I said you mean more men are going to get prostate cancer than women are going to get breast cancer I never heard of prostate cancer before where is the prostate I didn't know anything about it and uh, so later I found out that I had the disease, um, and then they asked um, the, the American Urological Association and their Urologic Care fashion, uh, um, Foundation asked if I would help uh, get the word out. I said, absolutely, because it's ridiculous. I didn't know anything about it. It did run in my family. Mm. I didn't know that my grandfather had died of prostate cancer. I knew he died of cancer. And so now I know the importance of, um, of finding out you have this particular disease early. Because if you do, it's treatable, and there's a almost a 99.9% uh, chance that you're going to be fine. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, so we're very fortunate. We have guys like Marcus Allen and Chris Carter and uh, so many Hall of Famers, Fred Bolitnikoff, who is a survivor, by the way, um, to help get the word out because we, you know, we can use our Hall of Fame status to do good things in the country, and a lot of uh, football fans are men. And uh, we want to make sure that they know that early detection is the key to staying in the game a long time. Well, we're obsessed with stats these days. So the website (laughs) is easy to remember, knowyourstats.org. It's always a privilege. I'm a little bit disappointed that you're not wearing the yellow jacket, but you are wearing the ring. Yeah, thank you, Amy. Raiders Super Bowl ring. I just got off the airplane, flew in, and uh, they rushed me over here to do this interview (laughs) with you. (laughs) Well, it's great to meet you. Thank you so much for spending a couple of minutes with it. We appreciate it. All right.